Who were the five nicest celebrities and who were the five meanest? I can tell you who the meanest one I ever met was. Uh oh. Her name is Ellen DeGeneres. But while all the evidence points to Ellen being awful, Adam Sandler is always highlighted as being incredibly kind. Take for example the time he was refused a table at IHOP after the server failed to realize it was Adam Sandler asking. Embarrassed, the server shared the CCTV to TikTok, prompting Adam Sandler to meet with the waitress personally while joking about the rejection by stating, for the the record I only left the IHOP because the nice woman told me the all you can eat deal didn't apply to the milkshakes, although fans were impressed for a slightly different reason. It's very humble of him to not assert that he's a celebrity and ask for special treatment. He acted just like a regular customer and didn't challenge anyone, I respect him for that, with his humble attitude extending to wedding photo bombs and that time he randomly appeared for some chicken. Hi guys. No way. No Wait, you're joking. He filmed a good chunk of Mr. Deeds in my hometown and he was simply the nicest man ever. He would come out to sign autographs after a full 14 plus hour day of shooting. Didn't matter how long the line was, he made sure every single person got to say hello. He had time for photographs and chats with everyone in town, frequented all the local coffee shops and posed with employees. He seemed to really care and know how excited we all were to have a movie happening and always had a smile. Although Adam's fans are the only people to talk very highly of him. You guys love each other. Is that yeah. is that fair to say? For sure. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I hear each of you individually talking about the other in such fond terminology. Yeah. After Pete Davidson worked with Adam Sandler on Saturday Night Live, Pete went on to state he's just such a cool, nice guy. I can't explain how wonderful of a person he is. Just like caring and sweet and not full of crap, which is very rare to find. But while Adam Sandler's happy on-screen mood clearly extends to his personal life, Mike Myers from Austin Powers is apparently much different when the cameras aren't rolling. Twitter users exposed Mike Myers as an absolute nightmare to work with. The article referred to a tweet reading, Mike Myers had me fired off the set of The Love Guru because I made eye contact with him and I was there as his bodyguard. The tweet had been posted by a person named Jay Brody, who then expanded on the incident in a podcast. You'll be basically guarding Mike Myers' trailer. They're like, here's the catch. Can't look at him. But I realized like, I can't let just anyone into the trailer. So I look up, I catch his eye for a second. I give him a nod to let him know I'm cool and then I look away and within an hour I get a phone call letting me know that I'm fired and I have to get off set. Prompting others to give their own anecdotes about Mike Myers' terrible attitude. I was an extra in Love Guru and remember being told we can't make eye contact with Mike. When I tell people this they don't believe me. Thanks for confirming. People always wonder why there weren't more Austin Powers movies but never realize how many stories there are like this about him. Basically no one wants to work with the guy with one of these other stories coming from the set of The Cat in the Hat, where Mike's co-star Amy Hill stated, his area was all covered with tenting because he didn't want anybody seeing him. It was so weird, it was just the worst, I was miserable. Hill also revealed how Diva Myers selfishly kept everyone waiting for hours, overruled the director, and even had someone standing by, just holding his personal chocolates in a dish. It was just a horrible, nightmarish experience, although people have only ever said the opposite about Steve Buscemi. Buscemi worked as a New York fire firefighter before quitting to pursue acting, although when the Twin Towers were destroyed on September 11, Buscemi walked into his old fire department to volunteer, working 12 hours a day for a week straight in the hopes of finding survivors. He called his old firehouse, then receiving no reply, headed to the site, where he found his former engine company. I asked if I could join them, he said, adding I could tell they were a little suspicious at first, but I worked with them that day. It was a privilege to be able to do it. It was great to connect with the firehouse I used to work with and with some of the guys I worked alongside. Note, this was in 2001 after he was already extremely famous from movies such as Fargo, yet according to an independent article on his volunteering, very few photographs and no interviews exist because he declined them. He wasn't there for publicity. Wouldn't you think you were hallucinating if Steve Buscemi helped you out of the rubble? What a great humble guy, with a Reddit comment then offering a slightly more personal story. I used to serve him all the time and he never once was a diva, always had a smile on his face, and I mean I don't even think he once had a compliment complicated order. He always ordered the most simple thing on the menu and always tipped 20 plus percent, not to mention Buscemi gets extra credit for being close friends with Adam Sandler. However, it seems Jerry Seinfeld was left out of the party, given every clip of him I've seen outside of his shows is just him being an unlikable douche with an ego the size of a small country. This sentiment began with a Larry King interview from 2007. I went off the air, I was the number one show on television, Larry. You were Do you know who I am? 75 million viewers. Last okay. episode. Were you? 
Don't take like it so pissed. bad. Well, that's a, a big difference between being canceled and being number one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bean movie Can we get opens. Get a resume in here for Bean me. Bean movie opens tomorrow. Over? Although this attitude extends into other moments, like the time he rejected Kesha. I love you so much. Oh, thanks. Can I give you a hug? No, thanks. Please. No, thanks. A little one. Yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> that was a nice moment. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Yeah, it was Kesha. Okay. Jerry then offered no apology for rejecting her. I don't hug a total stranger. <laughs> I have to meet someone, say hello. I need to know who are you. No, and I she really... was very nice about it. We laughed about it. Did you? Yeah. Did you hug her afterwards? No. No? Uh, Leading Kesha to change her mind about him for pretty obvious reasons. What happened with uh, Jerry Seinfeld? Oh time? my God. Are you friends with him? I am not. Okay, we're good. It was like the saddest moment of my life. Jerry also has a reputation for destroying the paparazzi. The worst place, like your bomb. I'm sure comics go through all the time. Another very weak, weak question. And after Lady Gaga was moved to his luxury basketball box for acting rudely at a game, he had this to say. This woman's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I hate her. I can't believe they put her in my box, which they I did. paid for. This is what you give people the finger and you get upgraded? Is that the world we're living in now? It's terrible. I love it. Jerry Seinfeld's meanness definitely has a charisma to it. However, if you're wanting a more humble type of charisma, then we have to talk about Post Malone. With entire compilations dedicated to him treating other people kindly, there are almost too many wholesome moments to choose from. Did you draw this? This is awesome. Oh my God. There was that time he went out of his way to greet a 21-year-old having his first beer, or that time he gave his $5,000 guitar to a fan after a concert. You want a guitar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a $5,000 guitar, so you have to promise me. You gotta yeah, promise me that you're gonna us. take care of it. Okay? 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 Post Malone treats paparazzi in the opposite way to Jerry Seinfeld. Boss, I want you to know that I, I really like your music. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Man. Yeah, that means definitely. a lot to me. Can you say hello to Nicole? Well, have, hi, Nicole. Love you guys. And when this fan somehow made it past security, Post Malone hugs the guy and treats him respectfully before he's taken off the stage. In a different instance, Post Malone let a fan come on stage to play the guitar part in Stay, and it's therefore no surprise that fans have told anecdotes story such as someone in a similar thread said post moved into his brother's street and went and introduced himself to all his new neighbors and invited them for a barbecue genuinely sounds like an awesome guy i believe this a hundred percent he had a party in an airbnb or something a few houses down from my group's airbnb and he legit went around the cul-de-sac himself inviting everyone to the party he also spent the entire night moving between groups chatting and generally being a phenomenal host and ensuring everyone had a blast 10 out of 10 dude but while nobody has anything negative to say about Post Malone, it seems nobody has anything positive to say about Chevy Chase. Remember when Pete Davidson praised Adam Sandler earlier in the video? Well, Pete had the opposite to say about Chevy Chase, stating, he's a fucking douchebag, I hate that dude. He's just a genuinely bad racist person and I don't like him. Chevy Chase was fired from community after calling Donald Glover the N-word, not to mention before the firing, Chase was simply difficult to work with. He was someone that did not want to be there for the hours that we were keeping. He sometimes could be in not great moods. Earlier in his career, Chevy Chase had gotten into a fist fight with Bill Murray, and while interviewing Robert Downey Jr., Chase stated, didn't your father used to be a successful director? Whatever happened to him? Boy, he sure died, you know, he sure went to hell. It's therefore no surprise that even Will Ferrell stated, the worst host was Chevy Chase. Yet Chevy Chase foolishly claims that all criticism is just jealousy. Did you just say that writers writing anything negative is jealousy? Yeah, I did. What kind of jealousy? I'm funnier than them? Yeah. I guess maybe. I'm considered good looking? Yeah, there you have it. It seems Chevy Chase needs a lesson on humility, and who better to teach it than Shaquille O'Neal? You gotta humble yourself. It's all about humility. And that's why I am where I am now. I humbled myself. I don't look down on people because they're lesser. Back in 2011, Shaq had hit rock bottom. He'd retired from basketball, divorced from his wife, and had no idea where his life was going next. I was lost. 76,000 square foot house by yourself. No kids. Go to the gym. Nobody's playing in the gym. You go to their room, nobody's there. It was during this period that Shaq's mom, Lucille,
Lucille gave him some advice. And then the queen, Dr. Lucille O'Neill said, hey man, I don't know you no more. You need to humble yourself. And when mama mm. talk, the true man listens. After which Shaq began working on becoming a better person. It state, the day I killed the narcissist Shaq is the day my kids text me, hey daddy, I miss you. Bro, when I got one of those texts, man, I actually cried then. I didn't know what to say. After I got that love from them, I said, you know what? I'm not going to be the asshole Shaq no more because I was an asshole and I lost everything. The day I released all that me, 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 Shaq, 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 Shaq is the day the blessings opened up. As a result, Shaq's been trying to create a fairly unique legacy. Talk about legacies. I want mine to be one sentence. Shaq was a nice guy. Which has been aided by his random acts of kindness, purchasing bikes, shoes, and laptops for less fortunate children. It seems the only people Shaq won't give money to are his own kids. Because I believe in respectable nepotism. You get all A's this next semester, you can get whatever you want. So he gets all A's, and I was like, go to the dealership and pick one. Then I get a call from Tesla. I said, man, you better take your ass across the street to Honda. <laughs> But while Shaq is an obvious choice as a nice celebrity, someone you might not expect to be rude is Bill Nye the science guy. I met Bill Nye as a kid and he was the biggest asshole I've ever met. It was a huge letdown after watching his show so often in class. My science teacher from seventh grade told us she had an explanation for why she tried to show us as few Bill Nye videos as possible. I believe she said she attended either a science workshop or an event for teachers where Bill Nye was there and he was completely rude to her and dismissed her the whole time. Bill's dark side becomes pretty obvious when he debates other scientists. However, it seems he becomes the meanest when talking to his most popular demographic, kids. Bill Nye came to visit my university. I was sorely disappointed. Bill Nye relied on sexist jokes to relate to the crowd. He kept complimenting women's legs and saying weird stuff about how sexy women are. He was trying to be relatable, but was sorely mistaken as he faced a crowd of driven female engineers and scientists. He went on about climate change and basically insinuated that we could be the policy changers while the real scientists did the real work. I couldn't believe how much my views of him were falling apart as I watched him pander to students he clearly didn't care about. I later heard that he wouldn't speak with students, only professors, with this anecdote following the very common theme of Bill Nye was my hero until I heard him talk. Although thankfully Keanu Reeves is the perfect balance between good and evil. While filming the second two Matrix movies, Keanu Reeves chose to give up 75 million worth of his movie earnings, instead redirecting the money to the special effects team who he said deserved it more. Even then this might not have been his most charitable act whilst filming, as a Reddit user stated, a family friend builds movie sets, doesn't design, is one of the poor dudes that just builds. Anyways, he worked on the set for The Matrix, and Keanu heard about family trouble he was having, and gave him a $20,000 Christmas bonus to help him out, although money isn't the only thing that Keanu has given up. In 2011, he was candidly filmed giving up his seat on the New York subway, and three years later in 2014, he waited patiently for 20 minutes in the rain, outside the rap party of his own film Daughter of God after a mix-up because he didn't want to cause a scene. He didn't say, hey, I'm Keanu Reeves, or yo man, this is my party, once to the bouncer, and the owner of the club was horrified when he found out afterwards that the actor was standing in the rain. It's therefore no surprise that there's an extremely popular subreddit dedicated to Keanu Reeves being awesome, although if there's one person who could offset this kindness with meanness, it's definitely Ellen DeGeneres. Right now, we all need a little kindness. You know, like Ellen DeGeneres, generous always talks about. She's also notoriously one of the meanest people alive. Respond to this with the most insane stories you've heard about Ellen being mean, and I'll match everyone with $2 to LA Food Bank. This was the tweet that started her downfall, as nobody could have expected how bad the responses would be. When I was 15, the Ellen Show was doing a contest of fans making a bust of her and sending it to her. I worked so hard on this and even wrote her a letter. Weeks later, she used it as a prop in a game and gave it away to a random person with $500 dollars attached to the bottom. Working for her, I was instructed that I can't look her in the eye and never ever say hi to her first. But don't worry, she definitely won't be saying hi to you in the first place. She creates the most toxic environment for her staff. I worked at Real Food Daily, served her and Portia at brunch. She wrote a letter to the owner and complained about my chipped nail polish, not that it was on her plate, but just that it was on my hand. I'd worked till closing the night before, and this was the next morning, almost got me fired. Chris Pontius stated on Steve-O's podcast that he wasn't surprised to hear these anecdotes. It's crazy that all this stuff's come out like about Ellen being mean. Because when I met her, I thought she was 
really mean like and she's like so what do i gotta do and she's just pissed to be there and then she comes out on stage and she's like all like funny nice ellen you know like the, the person that they think she is wow. and apparently neither were the 10 employees who came forward four months later to expose her terrible working environment toxic phony hypocrite liar that's what she is we were told from the very beginning don't talk to ellen don't do this you can't go into her office it was very nerve-wracking very stressful we all walked on eggshells all the time as a result ellen took a 14-week hiatus, returning with a pretty standard apology. Sometimes I get sad, I get mad, I, I get anxious, I get frustrated, I get impatient, and I am working on all of that. However, this failed to ensure a returning audience, as in May 2022, Ellen's show was cancelled completely.